Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. As you can see we have a slightly different looking setup today. Um, I've dug out my um, digital camera which is uh, one of the digital cameras. This is a EOS 760D that's a crop sensor camera and it has the 10 to 18 mil sitting on it and uh, it has a flippy screen so I can actually see what I'm doing he says. Um, I've taken on board your comments and I'm hoping the audio in this is going to be better. I've adjusted the level manually and um, hopefully it's uh, a lot clearer for you. I've brightened up the place. I've got a few cameras out, some you've seen, some you haven't seen. Just trying to sort of make it a little bit better. My production values are non-existent. I have to admit this project on YouTube started as a way of recording um, all of the cameras that and lenses that I have. I have over 200 cameras and probably five or 600 lenses um, and that's before you get into all the darkroom equipment um, so there's quite a lot that I want to record and uh, it will be on YouTube for posterity that's the kind of idea behind it because uh, I don't know how much interest there is in these old cameras but judging by the way the subscriptions have gone there's quite a bit but without further ado, that famous phrase that all YouTubers say, I've even got notes on being very professional today, or trying to be, um, I bring you yet another camera. And we're going back again to the 1970s. This is a brand you may have heard of, but they normally are related to lenses. And this is Soligor. Yeah, you can see that. I do have the autofocus on, so it might be hunting because it's not dual pixel. Um, funds permitting I will upgrade to a dual pixel camera because I think they're pretty awesome. So in the old days you used to get an ever ready case with your camera. Cost savings mean nowadays you don't get anything and straps and things like that which you don't sort of get so much nowadays. But there's a look at the camera itself, get you nice and close because it's a wide angle lens. So this is a Soligor TM and in fact Soligor was really just a brand name um, contract manufacturing is nothing new it existed when this camera came out which was 1974 so this came out the same year as the Fujika ST901 that we looked at yesterday but this is a very very old fashioned camera in comparison um, the TM stands for thread mount because this is an M42 threaded camera on the lens mount and as you can see it has what's called the automatic diaphragm so when you see auto on a lens it doesn't mean that it's uh, it's uh, an automatic exposure or it's auto focus lenses of this vintage like this has auto written on it you can see it quite clearly at the top all that means is that it's an m42 with this little pin on the back that closes down the aperture in the lens and the same as the Fujika, this one has the little bar at the front there, which comes forward and pushes on it. And this one locks, and the reason that it locks is because this camera has stopped down metering, believe it or not. That's how uh, old-fashioned it was. So, uh, I can't... That should go back in there. There you go. So yeah, Soligor uh, really just uh, rebranded. The camera was actually manufactured by Miranda um, until 1978 when Miranda stopped manufacturing cameras altogether, really because they couldn't compete with the likes of Nikon, Canon, Olympus. If you think 74 was the sort of time when the Olympus OM2 came out, that was another aperture priority camera. Nikomat EL was around, another electronically controlled shutter, and the smaller companies just couldn't really compete, so they gave up on it. There's no money to be made in making old solid cameras. Um, so this is a Miranda camera. They were badged there was a Miranda TM, a Soligor TM, and also a Palace, which I believe is what they were selling in Germany. Um, there was a Palace TM version as well. So on the front here, as we've already seen, we have a stop down lever. This will become important later when we talk about metering. So that stops the lens down. Apparently you push it and it should come back out. This is a very old camera. 
Um, we have two flash connections. We have one for FP stands for focal plane, and that relates to um, a certain type of flash bulbs. Even when this camera was new, flash bulbs were really a thing of the past. Everyone was moving on to electronic flash. And we also have an X sync, which is the bottom one, um, to, relating to electronic flash. This is the Mark I version in 1975, so this was only made for a year. They brought out a Mark II version. And you'll notice there's no cold shoe or hot shoe. There was an accessory shoe that fitted a bit like the Nikons over the, uh, the rewind crank. The Mark II has a cold shoe on the top of the pentaprism. That's how you can tell the difference between them. There's also a difference in the ASA, but we'll come to that with regards to metering. On the side, just a lug strap. The back is fairly plain. It's obviously got a catch here for the back door so it isn't a pull up to open the back door type of camera. On the bottom plate we have the rewind button, tripod mount in the middle of the lens which is nice, battery compartment. This only powers the meter. Um, this is a mechanical shuttered camera. There's no automation on it. It is a completely manual camera. And uh, Let's move to the top plate now. We have the film advance. It's quite a long throw on the film advance. We have a frame counter and this has a magnification thing on the top of it like a little bubble um, so it makes it quite difficult to read. We have a shutter release button. Uh, I don't think there's any lock on that. No, it's just a shutter release. It is threaded so you can put a cable release on it and then obviously we have the shutter speed dial and the index mark. So this camera has a B setting and it goes from a 15th all the way through to a thousandth of a second. Flash sync is here between a 30th and a 60th so I'm assuming that's probably about a 45th which is a bit of a strange one. Um, the ASA or ISO goes from 1600 right the way down to 25. The Mark II version goes up to 3600. That's another way you can differentiate between the two different models. We also have some uh, shorter speeds. We have an eighth, a quarter, two and a second as well. Now depending on the ASA you will lose some of the shutter speed so that for example when you're on a high ASA like I'm on 400 now so it won't allow me to select B, but if I select a lower ASA, uh, if I come down to, it's going up, if I come down to 100, it will allow me to select B. This is quite common on the range finders, you find this, this sort of functionality quite a bit. You can obviously work around it just by changing the ASA, so I don't really see the point of that, but that's a carryover from Miranda. On this side we have a rewind knob usual fold out does pull up and surrounding it we have a film reminder system so we've got color black and white and uh, yeah there's a connection for the hot shoe well it's not a hot shoe it's just a cold shoe that just slides in there and if it was a hot shoe it would have a flash sink on it now the interesting thing about these cameras is they have a removable pentaprism if we turn this dial slightly anti-clockwise we can slide the prism out and there you can see the prism housing. I've never actually seen any but I understand that there are waist level finders and uh, magnification finders available. I don't know if they ever got as far as actually uh, releasing them but uh, apparently they are available. And on this camera hopefully you can see the, uh, the match needle system in there there's a needle there between the plus and the minus and that is match needle metering I don't know whether you can see that there's probably too much reflection and glare in there but that's all you get in there is a, a little needle going up and down so let's see if we can put a battery in it this takes one uh, LR44 or SR44 so it's quite happy to run on uh, one and a half volts, which makes it really usable today. So I have a battery to hand, obviously, and the plus side, oh look if it goes on the outside. 
so we put the battery in. And you know me, I always struggle with putting batteries in cameras, it's because my hands are so ham fisted, but this one's an easy one to load. There we go. The metering turns on uh, with the, uh, the film advance. And you can see that the needle, you might not be able to see, but the needle isn't pointing up at the top. Um, so as I change the aperture, and the shutter speed is way too low. There we go, the needle's coming down. Uh, this film is way too fast for this. Bring it down a couple of stops, down to 100. Then you can see the needles pointing in the downward direction and as I open up the aperture or as I reduce the shutter speed we can get the needle in the middle still a little bit too high and when the need needle's in the middle then uh, sorry it's going to have to get used to looking at this screen whilst trying to show you stuff when the needle's in the middle um, that's when it's Exposure is correct. And it has to be stopped down. The lens has to physically be closed down because there's no coupling between the lens and the body so the, the camera doesn't know what aperture you've selected. It's only when it's stopped down that it knows what aperture has been selected and it just meters the actual light coming through um, to the inside. And this camera's weighting is very much towards the bottom of the picture. So you don't have to worry about bright skies or meter memory where you can remember the metering from looking at the ground and then recompose your shot. With this one it kind of doesn't take into account the sky so much because it's obviously a lot brighter. So that's how the metering works, very simple. So you, you stop down the lens, you take your meter reading and then you can let the lens open back up. When you take the picture the lens automatically stops down that's what the auto means because obviously f16 is very hard to see what your image is and you can see it goes very very dim right let's put the prism back on and then uh, we'll put some film in it on and looks like so. I can't really see the advantage of a waist level finder for a 35mm camera to be honest. I don't really see the, 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 the logic of that. On a large format camera then yes. So we open up the back. All metal made in Japan, very nice quality. You can see there's the uh, the back plate. You can see along here where the foam has started to deteriorate. So these are foam light seals in here will need to be replaced but obviously you can put some black tape over it multi slotted take up spool very nice um, this is the, obviously the, the drive for the sprockets uh, cloth focal plane shutter and it's horizontally travelling what we set to 100 won't let me fire the shutter with the back open that's a bit strange Okay. No, it won't fire at all. This is another video that's going really well. Mm, that is strange. Maybe that's a safety feature that's built in, or uh, prisms in. There we go. Rewind down. Yeah, there we go. Yep, old cameras and glitches. So we open the back up and get some film out. Oh, I don't know what I've got in here. This is a test film thing. Yep, this is one of my test films. So that goes up. Drop it in there. Pull it across the usual system into the take up spool that's quite a nice easy loading one 
wind it on until the second lot of holes meet the sprocket, lock the back, wind on and fire, and then as always, there's a daddy long legs flying around here. We just rewind the film until it's just tight. Ooh. Okay, so it's mind of its own. And I don't see this going round, so that's a little bit worrying. Uh, always with me and Lydia's. So that hasn't loaded properly. Something ends up on the floor. There we go. Two and three, and then we're ready to go. So there we are. The Soligor TM. Very short-lived camera, really. 74 to 78. This one was only 74 to 75. Um, nicely built. Japanese metal, good quality, but totally lacking in any sort of sophistication. Which I suppose is its charm. Um, can't compete with the electronic cameras of the same era, like I say the Fujica or the Olympus LM2 or Nikon, uh, Nikon at EL or the Pentax ES and ES2, couldn't compete with them. And you think this was, they were still trying to sell this in 1978, so no, that's why the company went under. And uh, Miranda stopped making cameras, so therefore Solid Law didn't have anything to sell because there was nothing there uh, for them to sell. Very well known for lenses, the solid or lenses are pretty good. Um, they're very cheap on the dreaded eBay and well worth a look if you're into M42 mounts. But yeah, there's a further continuation of the theme of the M42s. I'll look at my notes and just make sure that I've covered everything. Yeah, the Miranda's had a dual bayonet system on their cameras. I think I just knocked mine there. Um, this didn't have it, this was designed to try and widen the amount of lenses that could be used on their cameras. Um, and yeah, we've covered everything really. Yep, that's the lot. Thank you very much for watching. Comments down below, please do tell me that my videos suck and I need to work at them. Um, I do value your feedback, I won't take offence at it. Um, I never expected anybody to watch these, these videos. and. Uh, since Roger's video last week it's just gone sort of crazy and uh, yeah I do need to get some improvements. I have ordered some microphones, one of them nice little ones that you can fit on your collar and one of them boom ones that goes on top of they call shotgun microphones with dead cats and things. So I have ordered some of that stuff but uh, yeah anything that you, you see that you don't like let me know. If there's certain cameras that you want to see or certain things about photography you want me to discuss um, please leave a comment. Um, I'm, I'm always reading the comments, I'm always trying to respond and uh, yeah I'm just trying to get the channel to improve a little bit and uh, there we have it. That's all for today folks, thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next one.